Uh, very warm welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup, Greg Batten. The Pac-Man is in action. He's taking on John Rowe. And it's Greg who has the opening break of the match. Stephen Jameson and Mick Hill with you on commentary for this one. Race to seven, 40 minutes on the match clock. Whichever one comes first, zero on the clock or seven frames on the board will take the victory. And John Rowe is going to get first visit. Greg with a decent split, but no balls down. And it's going to give the ringer first sniff at these. Yeah, a decent break from Greg. Um, not the most explosive. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a match where you'll really see the difference in the breaks, I think, quite quite comprehensively, because John's got an absolute sledgehammer when it gets going. Yeah, John's got a really big break. Um, Just got to be a little bit careful here. It looks like the two reds at the, the bottom of the table, as we look, go to the bottom left, but not to the bottom right. Now, we could get um, caught out with the camera angle, but th th that appears to be the case. So we'd want to be landing straight on the red that he's looking at now, kind of in, 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 the, in the, the racking area. He wants to be straight as he can on this. OK, has the camera fooled us? Or did he play to just flick the yellow there? Hmm. Yeah, so they don't go bottom right. Or do they? Is it yellow? red enough the yellow, is it? Yes. Good call. What a great shot that is from John Rowe to open things up. Beautifully done. May have landed a fraction straight on this ball, so may have to just take his medicine unless he tries to force it. Okay, so he's took his medicine. Absolute Brucey bonus there as well, and freeing up the eight ball with that last shot and developing it. Yeah. It's freed everything up for him. But misses the pot. Yeah, I was just about to say, these look a little bit easier than what they actually are. <laughs> yeah. Um, So the perfect scenario for a player is to come to the table um, with no traffic. Um, what I mean by that is no object balls of, of, of the other person's colour in, in the way of anything. And it's kind of, you can feel get a feel for the table with, 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 with very little pressure on you, knowing that um, even if you do happen to run into trouble, You've obviously got so many balls to to hide behind, or you know, win the basically win the frame at your at your pace. You see, it's kind of even when you make a mistake, it doesn't even matter. Um, yeah, because you end up with a <laughs> with a great snooker. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it kind of. I'm not saying that he you know he, he would have wanted to have got out there, of course, for his own confidence, but it's kind of yeah. Once you miss once once you miss your last ball or you've got a couple of balls left on at at, at this game, you you normally big on, you know, underdog uh, versus seven of, of your opponent's colour. Go oh, what a shot, Johnny Rowe! Unless you do that, of course. He's unlucky. He's going to have to play another one. He's played an absolute beauty there, but he's full ball snooking on the eight ball. That's tough. Yeah, and just for the viewers at home, there's there's no jump shots allowed um, in, in, in our in our rules of of the game. Um, for those that may have been watching a bit of Moscone Cup the other week and seeing <laughs> the jump shots, we haven't we haven't got that in our rule set. Well, that that, that wasn't a million, a million miles away either. If you'd have made that all better yeah, off, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a million miles away. It's a brilliant effort. Had to try and hit it at an angle to get it moving towards the pocket. That was great imagination from John Rowe. But eventually, Greg Batten will get his chance to win the frame, which he should do from here. I've seen this a couple of times from Greg on the 2021 Pro Series, particularly in the early rounds. He's a he's a little bit of a confidence player. Needs that. Needs a few frames on the board. Can sometimes be prone to some skittish matches early on in tournaments. 
But as Shane alluded to in the studio before this match, he's got fantastic temperament, which goes a long way in these early round matches when nerves are high and margins are fine. He's making a meal of these, um, in all fairness. Cue balls and a fair few miles on, on 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 this finish, but he's got there. Yeah, it certainly has. Cue balls working off its Christmas dinner, I think. <laughs> but one nil, Greg Batten. As we say, had to work pretty hard for that, but he won't mind. It's a one on the scoreboards, and the Pac-Man has been in good form in the Pro Series, particularly the longer it has gone on. He ended the season in 12th position, and should be and, and is quite rightly pretty proud of that his aim at the start of the season as he said in his interview was top 16 and to achieve top 16 in, in this field you take that at all costs it's a, it's a decent achievement that absolutely considering the format that we have now where we've got the 48 pros and the top 16 seeds uh, in effect uh, jump the first round you know so so the players rank 17 to 48 play uh, play around prior to the, to the top 16 joining them in the last 32 which is huge of course at this level you don't want to be in that minefield of um, of the prelim if that's what you want to call it for a lot of players as well it meant that finishing in the top 16 meant they could have Boxing Day at home <laughs> which well, was also well, a little bonus it. there's that massive John Rowe break that we spoke about he does catch them so so well Have we had an ultimate pool plane shirt competition? I might have to get on to Will with that one. <laughs> our, our media man. I think uh, I think I'll put Greg favour for that. Beautiful design, isn't it? Yeah. The old, the old yeah. pack man. Got that nickname, incidentally. Players amateur champion in 2017. PAC pack writes itself, but it's a nickname that stuck for him. Yeah. I was wondering where where it come from, actually. Well, there you go, more There you, know. you go. Learn something new every day. Now, John's got a slight problem area here in that his red to the bottom left of the table just needs a bit of a solve. And he's played that beautifully. Bad. Yeah, it's a great shot. Beautifully. He was probably playing for bottom right, but he'll take it right centre. Cue ball tracking towards his other balls. Nice. Just wants to mind his work here, just where, where the red he's hitting goes after he's played the plant. Nicely controlled. Yeah, wanted that to stay on the table, give him some options. John, just got, just got there, I think. Just got there. Very nearly too short. He's yeah. made for a trickier eight ball than he liked. And it was pretty much everything for too far, nothing for short there, really. This for one apiece. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. John Rowe ties things up. And the ringer has been in pretty good form without really hitting the heights. You can see they're ranked 27th on the Ultimate Pool Pro Series this year. Had some good performances without necessarily getting the results that he feels like his players deserved. And that can be frustrating as a player. Yeah, well, similar to Neil Raybone, you know, ranked 29, John ranked at 27. And, you know, you, you look at the rankings and you think, well, I don't see 26 players higher than, than John. Um, but as I've alluded to, you know, with the new ranking system that we've got, everyone's kind of finding their feet a little bit where the rankings are concerned. I think the rankings will settle down after a couple of seasons and with respect, we will probably find out where players 
you know, r rankings are, 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 are likely to be or should be. Um, just at the moment, obviously, there's a, a, a draw thing, you know, it's in the lap of the gods to get a, a decent, you know. I'm not saying there's a decent draw, I said, but, but there are tougher draws than than, than, than some, of yeah, course. There's, there's that's tough that's, draws and very tough draws. That's just how it is, yeah. <laughs> that's just how it is. And, and, and uh, I don't know exactly how it's gone for John uh, throughout the season, but... You know, there's a, there's a few variables at the moment that will inevitably settle down after a, a couple of seasons with regards to the rankings. Yeah, two players out there who you tend to root for as, as players, such nice guys off the table. And Greg is going to get first visit in frame number three. A oh, little bit of last ball rolling syndrome here because... Um, he's given up on this, hasn't he? Yeah, he's given up. didn't hit them fantastically well. And the last ball rolling. The heartbreaker. Because you feel that when you're sat in the opposite chair, don't you? You get your hopes up a little bit. Oh, I'm, uh, John, uh, John will be sat there now uh, silently raging. That they're <laughs> 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 or certainly I know one or two players that... Uh, there it is, that silent rage yeah, of John Yeah, look, Rowe. look. I don't think he's capable of rage, you know. Mate. No, he's too calm, isn't he, John? It's a nice opening shot from Greg. And yeah. I, I see him playing the one over the bottom, just fractionally cushing first here and leaving the cue ball on the... Ah, I was just about to say, if he left the cue ball on the bottom rail there, he could have actually played the one bottom left and drawed into the, the bad yellow. And he's basically on everything. Um, he's played it, I think, so he's going to drop the yellow into the centre pocket, um, which works just the same. Tough shot, mind. Saw in the first frame how tight these pockets are playing. And he's played that really well. Yeah, used his own ball. Um... So there's a couple of options here. He can he can play the one over the centre next, or leave the one over the centre till last. Um, his preference. So that tells me he's going to play it last. He could have drawn off the cushion there and played it next, and then played these two last. Um, so he's just got to mind the eight ball here. Yeah, he's looking at... He's that's just having a look at that, isn't he? Yeah, and that's why he could have played this one last. If the one in the centre's not there now, he hasn't got a shot to play. Um, but he's played it nicely. Yeah, lovely. It's for 2-1, then. Both players just starting to settle. That's what we like to see. Greg Batten goes 2-1 in front. Much more like it from the Pac-Man. He was assured on that visit to the table. And his performances through the season have just got better and better and better. S suffered a little bit towards the start, but some big performances as the series went on. Semi-final in Pro 5. His best result of 2021. And a player that... I think is pretty generally well respected amongst fellow players. Yeah, well, I think with Greg, you, you know what you're going to get. Like you said, their best result uh, is a semi-final, but yet he's ranked number 12. So you know that he's he's very consistent with with churning out results. Um, up to yet, he hasn't, you know, set anything alight, so to speak. But um, but he's always kind of he's always hard to beat. You know, he's always, he's got a good temperament, good technique. Comes from a snooker background. Um, I've got to know Greg very well over the last few months, actually, so I know his character a little bit more as well. Um, and he's very calm, you know. He, 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 a bit like John, I suppose. They're hard, they're hard to play against because you don't, you can't get them rattled. You know, they can't get them at it. Um, Speaking of rattled, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a break! Oh, can't wait to watch this one in slow mo. He does crunch them. And the cue ball jumped back just nice, didn't it? And in a straight line. Yeah, I could feel a little bit aggrieved, but I think the outside red of the two pots 
Well, he's elected to cannon them, and he'll settle for that. Yeah, he'll absolutely take he, that. He will take that. I think that red next to yellow will pass into the top left corner once this. If not, he can just gently just draw back into it, just give it a little tickle, unless it goes right centre. It, 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 it's awkward to tell from here, but I, I, think, I think give it a little tickle. Yeah. Just like that. Nicely played. So, a couple of options here. He can go, um, after playing this one, he could go middle, middle eight ball, depending on what angle he lands on, or he could go middle corner eight ball. The problem with the corner is he does have to land good on it. He has to land fairly straight. Gonna have to be corner because he's slightly exactly. straight the wrong way. Yeah, but that's the issue. Is he just there, or has he got to play this with extreme running side, which is right hand side? No, he's just took his medicine. Look, yeah, this is a tough shot now. Yeah. Will Greg Batten get another bite at this frame? To overcut it. Tough, tough shot. And yeah. Greg will indeed come back to the table. And he's got the angle here, Greg, first shot if he wants to, to, uh, to develop that awkward yellow. Assuming it doesn't drop into the centre pocket. Tough one for John Rowe. done all the hard work really well at the top of the table. But it's amazing how one poor shot can snowball Absolutely. towards the end of your break. Absolutely. So Greg's just looking here, do, does he... Does he fetch the, 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 the awkward yellow out of there or does he drop on it and back himself to dribble it into the centre? OK, so he's played on it and he's on it absolutely perfect. Couldn't pick that bet up with his hand. And this is it from Greg's perspective. He's, he looks like he's about to go 3-1. Oh, sorry, Greg. Commentator's, Commentator's curse strikes. Curse. Wow. I didn't see that coming, did you? Uh, that's a really surprising miss. John Rowe's going to polish off this frame. But the, the real story there is that miss from Greg Batten, a wow. real shock. And what was, so, what was so interesting was that he actually missed it on the near side jaw. Um, the kind of pro way to play that would be to kind of try and dribble it in off the far jaw, you know, because of the way that the, the cut of the pocket is made. Um, so not only the surprising miss, but actually that he missed it on the near jaw as well. Real let off there for John Rowe, who for sure made a mistake in his visit. It's amazing how small a mistake it can be that can derail a frame, whether it be just finishing off straight the wrong way. That's what happened with John, or whether it be Greg Batten missing, I mean, a tricky bit of pot that he would absolutely expect to make 10 times out of 10 into the middle bag. A little bit of a thousand yard stare from Greg there. I don't think he can quite believe what he's just done, but has the next break and he's, he's developed a good habit over the years of taking each frame as it goes. He has got an excellent temperament. He'll need to call upon it after a miss like that. Took out a little bit of extra frustration in that break. You can yeah, feel it. Yeah. Best break of the match so far for Greg Batten. Well, that doesn't happen very often, where the pool gods decide to give you a, a bit of a break, shall we say, there, because look at these reds after missing that yellow into the centre. Is just what he needed, and it's wow. so rare that happens. Oh, it is rare, I tell <laughs> you. Normally they punish you. It is so strange how it it works. I know it's uh, almost become something of your catchphrase. I know, Mick, the the pool gods, but in, in sort of layman's terms, you're talking about just momentum, really, and just how it can swing in a match. And it it doesn't 
tend to, it, it can't make sense. There's no rational rhyme or reason, but it's amazing how often mistakes are compounded by just sheer luck on the next break. Well, well that's it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I heard a, an, a, an interview with Ronnie O'Sullivan as it happened, and he was talking about the snooker gods, and he was saying that... <laughs> There's a couple, is there? Yeah, he said he, he, he referred to... I had a little chuckle when he said it, of course, but... Um, and he basically said, listen, you know, that they will, that, you know, they will look down on you positively, but you won't know when, but it will come. You just don't know it, you know, in terms of he was talking about practicing and, 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 and doing the right things, the running and all the different things. And I thought, yeah, you know, he's like thinking that way as well. You know, it's, um, well, well, there's no rhyme or reason to it. So what, what, what do you allude to to keep your sanity? Do you know what I mean? You're going to have to come up with some kind of... Pun or theory, well, otherwise we go mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? Anything to stave off the uh, that sort of feeling. Craig Patton's quietly gone about this clearance very, very well. It was a, a friendly lie, shall we say? And this eight ball was always going to go, and he needed that after the way the last frame ended. Craig Patton back in the win column on the frames. I'd love to know what John's thinking there. Because <laughs> you almost, it, it's funny, isn't it? You, as a player sat there, you, you're fully expecting it to work the other way yeah. because you see it so often. But and you know sat there that John's thinking, well, if, I'm, if I miss that yellow, then I'm absolutely breaking yeah, dry. Yeah, I get one. kicked enough in yeah, the top yeah. corner or, <laughs> yeah. I know what my old pal Chris Mellon would have made of that, I'm sure. He would have been... Uh, he would have been cursing to see that layout like that after that missed uh, yellow in the middle. Oh, quite right too. I'm sure he's watching. I'm sure he's watching at home or on his way down. Yeah, we'll see Chris Melling not too long, a couple of days' time, I think, on uh, on BT Sport. He's uh, he's drawn a tough, tough group there, mind. But there's a certain six-time world champion who might run into him in the second round if, yeah, uh, if he gets his act together. Dave McNamara first up and. Uh, I play against Jordan Shepherd, so that's a, uh, Can't wait for that's that a really, match, by the way. really tough, uh, tough section. Obviously, we we'll, hope that we won't be seeing as much as Chris as what you lot would like at home. <laughs> <laughs> Been an even match so far then for Greg Batten and John Rowe. Played to a good stand. Wow, look Goodness at this break! Me. He's creaming that break, isn't he? Wow, three yellows down. Thump. And four just, just waiting. It's not just a case as well. You can I'll allow you to break this down for our viewers if you can, Mick. It's it's not just a case of pure power and throwing your cue at it. There's a lot of there's a real art form to it as well. Yeah, John Rowe is, is taking natural power out of his break to, to time it better and cue through it better. Yeah, I mean timing it timing is key. I mean, you know, primarily, you know, sometimes you hit them great and they still don't go in. I mean that's just our game, you know, that's just one of the things in our game. You know, it, it's um, a very frustrating part of the game, I, I must add, from a player's perspective. But you would have to think that your probability of making one increases the better that you strike the balls. Um, that would just seem logical to me with, 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 without, you know, maybe not having any evidence of that. But sometimes, you know... You, you you hit them poorly and you make one. It it, it yep. is just one of those things. But I think over a season or over a career, John's going to make more balls than than not if he continues to hit them like that. You know. So. And it was something that led to that world championship win in 2012. He he was just breaking monstrously time after time after time, and it, it can feel a little bit runaway train when he's he's hitting him like that. Brilliant finish off the break from John Rowe. 3-3. A three, three. little bit of frustration out there, I think, for both players a little bit. But they're, they're playing well out there. Well, they both probably feel like there could be a couple in front. I think that's the, that's, that's the key here. It's three each. Um, Greg would certainly think he's supposed to be 4-2. Um, so I, I would imagine John would be the... The, the slightly happier of the two were three three. Yeah, it certainly feels like he's made the least mistakes, or at least the one big mistake that he did make. He wasn't punished for, of course, with the miss from Greg. 
Well, you, well, I think from from Greg's perspective, he's been the one that's counter punching. So where you kind of you're supposed to win the games when the other person's broke down. John has initially had the chance, but he's had so much more work to do. So I mean, yeah, I mean, John could argue, well, I've I've had chances to go four two. Um, but as I said, because Greg's been the counter puncher, he he kind of definitely should have been four two. Really beautifully poised this match at this stage. Twenty two and a half minutes left. Three each. It's rattling along. And again, Greg's just putting a little bit extra into that break. Yeah, and look at this spread here again. Wow. You can see the, the sort of trade-off that he's making, though. The first two breaks that he had in this match were certainly a little bit of pace taken off, going for more control, getting the timing and the and the cue spot on. Yeah. But, well, but as he's put more power into it, loses the cue ball a little bit, but he's getting more results. Yeah, the best way that I would describe that is if you were if if, if you follow golf at all at home, you know, there's there's been able to hit the driver a long way, but being able to hit the driver down the middle of the fairway is another thing completely. Yeah. Um, you know, so so it, John has got more natural power and timing in the break in terms of he has got m much more chance of controlling the cue ball with power than what Greg has. So for Greg to go with the power aspect, he has to somewhat accept that he's going to have to sacrifice um, control to do it, um, whereas John's is more natural power. So um, John keeps a, a lot more control with the power that he's putting into the break, basically. Um, Not quite there. It's one of those shots that you think brand new cloth might just sneak in, but almost pleasing to see that not in a way, yeah. with, with all due respect to Greg. And it's probably why he played it. He probably believed that with the new cloth and, and everything else that it was... Because um, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't play that uh, shot if, um, if you didn't believe that, it, that, that, that the pockets was fairly generous. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd take an alternative... I think there's a fair few of our ultimate pool professionals sat at home watching this thinking, oh, yes, good. Let's <laughs> see a little bit of this. Well, I think, I think, I think, um, you know, in time, you know, p p potentially, you know, there's a, there's a big talk about the, the, the pockets and, wh and whatever else. And I, and I guess in all, um, in all sport, we, um, you know, you want everything to be on merit and a, a skill factor, you know, a, a, as much as possible. And, and um, But it also has to be attacking and fast-flowing, and we want we want to see good pool. And sometimes you can't have it always. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that I mentioned a few times in the 2021 series, that some really, really good players have had to get used to losing a little bit with the quality of the field and how attacking the rule set is. You just have to take some defeats now and again against players you can't do anything about. This is John will be upset here because he can do something about this. This is yeah. a poor miss by his standards. The, um, the look on his face um, may suggest he didn't feel like he got the cleanest of contacts. Um, Would have loved that to stay on the table. Oh, wow. Would have loved that to have stayed on the table. And that's why, because now he's on nothing. Just gives you that little extra insurance policy. And John Rowe just sits slightly well, more upright in his chair. Truth be told, he's had, a, he's had a bit of a nightmare there, Greg. One cushion into the right middle. About all he's got on, isn't it? Well, the problem with this is he's probably absolutely raging inside the shot he's just played. He's not got an extension. Oh! oh. And because he's rushed that, wow. he's ended up behind the yellow, would you believe it? And and how does it even go behind the yellow, by the way? When you look at the way the two balls are sat, look at that. It's like bounced off the object ball back in behind the yellow. It's because he's had to play it so quickly, he's almost snatched it and forced a little bit of screw on it. It's, yeah. 
I think I think he wants to give this a bit of a heave. Yeah, I'm not surprised. A bit of a hit and hope, oh, and dear. so often they are rewarded with absolutely nothing, and that will lose them the frame. And is this the turning point that we've been waiting for in the match? Because it looked locked at one point, and Greg was definitely supposed to go 4-3 here. Keep one hand anywhere on the table, and off you go. And John Rowe doesn't need any more encouragement. These are all there. That could be a big moment in the match. Oh, easy, John. Easy, John. Easy, John. Would you believe oh, it? Oh, wow. Would you believe it? Wow. Do you know, I was just about to say that most players would play that into the centre, but with that table being so slick, there was a case for playing it into the corner, even though you never normally would. Already seen a couple of very good recoveries. That is not going to be one. That will be a foul as well. Must hit a cushion after contact. Neither cue ball or eight ball did. So, eagle eye Matt Ward straight on the case. And... I mean, this feels like a massive frame in the match, doesn't it? It really well, does. It's it's incredible. John Rose made two big mistakes. Greg Batten's made a big mistake. Is it going to be Greg to take away frame number seven? John Rowe can barely bring himself to look at the table. He'll feel absolutely sick. And you can see he's still thinking about it. Greg Batten gets it done. I don't think he can quite believe that he's had the chance to do it. And just feel like both these players are just going through the mill a little bit here. Generally, played pretty well. But as it is, Greg Batten takes the lead. Let's uh, take a look at what we've got coming up for you a little bit later on this afternoon on BT Sport. Group B in the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup should be a cracker. Jimmy the Joker Croxton takes on Tom Cousins, the two-time world champion in his Ultimate Pool Pro Series debut. And on the other side, Carl Morris himself, a former world champion, the youngest ever in 1998. He takes on the greatest female player of all time, Emma Cunningham, with, I mean... Talk about world titles in that group. There's a there's a fair few. I guess seven in total at my count. Yeah, another another fantastic afternoon's worth of uh, worth of pool for everyone to see. I can't believe John's not been kicked off in off there. That's what we were talking well, about earlier. Is, yeah. That's that's what tends to happen. He has come up dry though. I don't think either player has, has really settled. Um, you know, from the off. Um, you know, John missing the red in, 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 in the centre and Greg kind of scrambling the frame, you know, in, in, in a couple of bites and John getting out the snooker and then, you know, but... Um, if you're going to break dry, though, you'd probably want to leave a table a little bit like this. There's a couple of problems around. I think he's got the red into the left centre off the bottom rail to disturb the, the balls on the right-hand side, has he? That's what he's played, and he's got a little bit of something there. Yeah, I think he'll take that. Mm. Has he got the red into the opposite centre, the one he's nearest to? I think so. To draw into the red and yellow, or would he come back for that and play it into its traditional pocket and play the cannon that way? A couple options. Quite fiddly queuing if that's the shot he's going to play. Yeah. He has to play it really well. I wouldn't be surprised to see him play it, though, and draw into it. Well, if that was how it was, probably mm, he could never really generate the power, could he? I think to get the sort of power required to to knock those out, you're just running the risk of making a foul, aren't you, mm. with, with them so close together? Yeah. So does he chip off the red and just rest, rest the cue ball in behind the red and the yellow? Bottom left. Yeah, you know, no real merit to chasing a finish yeah. there. It's a reasonable safety shot from Greg Batten. Yeah, so I think we'd, we'd, we could probably see John just 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 chip away again. I think. Um, 
Yeah, it doesn't need to. Do, it doesn't need to do anything too silly, really. Um, Just a simple shot from John Rowe, nothing yeah. too extravagant. Greg, o over to you is what he's just said there. Yeah, Greg kind of wanted the cue ball trapped up against the back of those balls, so John couldn't really do that. Um, you know, I, I, I think Greg's probably just got to keep dis just to, to just chip away and give some distance here. Um, mm. Okay then. He's had a nudge there. Uh, yeah, hand up from Craig Van, quite right too. Yeah. Look how his cue balls come out. I mean, if he's played that, we all need some lessons. <laughs> <laughs> and he's even made John's yellows on top of the table a little bit more awkward. He's had a real nudge there. Oh, nice pot. Nice shot. And I think John's decided there's no... No yeah. prizes for going for safe here. He's going to have to go for it. Yeah, I wonder if he could play the plant at the top of the table now. I, th I think he can see the middle one of the three yellows. And if he can see the middle one of the three yellows, he can make the one nearest the pocket. If he doesn't play it now, it's going to be a chase, unless he just tickles in behind them. Um, yeah, he could have just played the last part, yeah, maybe just to develop the frame. He can he, he, he can see the middle one of the three, so he can definitely make the one out the nearest the pocket, without a doubt. If he doesn't like it, he can just tickle him behind them. Oh, oh that's a poor shot. Do you know what? I actually really think he could have made that ball. Looks like he's trying to sneak through to that second yellow, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, clock might do, clock shot might do Greg here. Yeah? He's not careful. He's flirting with that shot clock every now and again, isn't he? Red still need a little bit of work. This red wow. closest to the eight ball. How yeah, would you like that playing on the double? I think it's already hard, isn't it? This goes in the rest of his work's routine. Well, be careful it doesn't double square. And it did. This table, for some reason, I'm not 100% sure why, doubles, doubles square. The amount of doubles that I see that miss on the short side, um, from whether it be the top end of the table or the bottom end, bottom end of the table. Now, John. Just feel like this match is going to go right down to the wire, don't you? That's a nice speed. Nicely played. He's got to be a little bit careful. He wants to just catch this just quarter ball. Unless he's two options, two ways of playing it. He can come off the pot the ball and come off the bottom cushion and flick the yellow, or he can go straight into the yellow. He's chose that way, and he's had a, he's had a decent result. Yeah, the yellow at the top of the table was his insurance policy, and that's why. Right, he's got to he's, he's got to time this well. He's got to hit this good. Not bad, not bad. And down. And now the moment what, into the 15 second shot clock zone. And now what he's thinking is, I've already snookered myself on one eight ball. Please don't do it again. Clock nice. This for four each. Big moment in the match. Punched home by John the Ringer Row. And just think this match is going to go very, very close. Nine and a half minutes left. There's still plenty of time on a 15 second shot clock. Are you calling six all? I think we'll have time to get every frame in at this rate. It's, it's been a funny old match. They've, there's, it's not been a slow match by any stretch of the imagination. They've both. Played pretty quickly and, and got through. And there you see a little bit of a, 
of an exchange between them. <laughs> Always feels to me so strange to see John in game face mode when he's sat out there in the arena because he's yeah. such a big teddy bear off the table. Yeah, yeah. Both of them are massive fans of the game. They really do love it. They'd love a run in yeah. this tournament at all. That was a much better break, actually. Um, Not been rewarded, mind. No, no, unfortunately. For, uh, just have a look out, see how that yellow sits at the top of the table. Uh, initially, I thought reds, but I like the yellows. So does Greg. He doesn't anymore, mind. That's tough. That's tough. And John could create the perfect angle to develop his reds with one shot. Cue ball in hand, got the angle, played a natural into the reds, and, and now look how simple these reds look. Yeah. He's just got to he's just got to mind his work a little bit with the red at the top of the table. He'd like to be uh, he'd like to be low of the ball in, in, in ideally, but I don't know if he can get there at this stage. Oh, get off the rail, John! Get off the rail. Hmm. Yeah, and that was it because he want he kind of wants to stop the cue ball where the red ball is, and then play the one on the breaking line top right which then runs lower of the, the red near the yellow, as yeah, we look. can't do that now. No, he's got some work to do now. One, one glance up at the shot clock, 15 seconds is, is ruthless. Absolutely We've not seen much brutal. of it so far. Brutal. Now the beeps are going and all, all, all manner. He's cued that really well. Yeah. He's still got work to do, mind, but yeah. well, he's done well to get where he is. He'll take it. It is astonishing when you put yourself in that scenario just how quick 15 seconds is. It yeah. really feels like absolutely nothing. I'm wondering if he can t if he can miss the yellow here with playing with topspin, or is he going to catch the yellow? Yeah, he did catch it, but he's still okay. Yeah, judged it well. This for a lead for Johnny Rowe. Oh, you wow. lucky boy. Wow. You lucky boy. Wow. And a wry smile from the ringer. <laughs> Never in wow. doubt, he says. You sure? It's amazing getting that camera shot, isn't it, Mick? Because we're absolutely dead in front of it. And it's a dead straight part. It's a pure test of cueing that. And when the situation gets to you, Easily, easily missed. Well, I thought he'd missed it, I'll be honest with you. I wheeled straight down the barrel there and I thought he'd missed that. I thought he'd missed it to the right hand jaw. But, uh, but I, no. I, I think tomorrow and the day after, Safely certain home. players won't be as lucky. Yeah. Got away with one and he knows it. Big, big pot to make as well. Seven minutes and change left. He leads by a frame, two from home. Goodness me, he caught that. That cue ball almost took out the table wow. light. What a break that is. What a break that is. Let's have another watch of this. Hmm. Oh, he's playing the he's playing the yellow, is he? Oh, okay. Okay. It's one of those where I think on this shot clock in this situation, you just got to play what you see almost immediately. Well, I mean, maybe maybe, maybe the red next to the eight ball doesn't go into the centre. I, I don't know. It looks like it has that. Yeah. It could be touching the eight though. If it's touching touching the eight ball, it probably doesn't. Um. He's, he's a bit of work to do here. Going into his work here. How's that come out? Well, he's got the cannon beautifully, but didn't make the pot. Mm. 
And there we see. That does look really tight. First thing Greg wanted to look at. Yeah, it goes to the top, though. Yeah, it definitely plays up to the top right, mm. but I think it's very, very tight in the middle. And if he lands low on one of these reds at the bottom of the table, he can use the cue ball to go into the red and, and the eight. Preferably the red, you would think. Mm. Can he pot? Can he pot the red? Miss his own red, and make something happen with that red and the eight ball. We're gonna find out. And he could. That's a great shot. Oh, oh that's unlucky. Good news, bad news. Yeah. At least he's got the angle on the one in the middle to go into it again. Not ideal, though. Five seconds to play a next shot. This is where it gets so tough. Oh, he'll take Des that. Deserves something, and he's, he's got that. something. He'll take that. I might want to play this with just, just a trace aside. Just a trace. Nothing for nothing but nothing for low. Oh, does the eight go in the corner? This is a, a big chaser, this one. That looks mighty tight into that bottom corner. Ready off the yellow. Mm, it must go then. This what? looks very tight. Having a little you know, look I've, at it. I've looked at it again. Like it does go. It's amazing how, how these camera angles fool you, isn't it? Never in doubt for Greg Batten. Never in doubt. And he punches that one in. A little bit more degree of certainty than John Rowe in the last frame. And this match continues to undulate and swing one way from the other. Absolutely no idea where this is going to end up. pair of them are sharing a joke. I think that's just a, it's a way to relieve some tension out there, isn't it? Because both of them at this stage will be desperate to get the victory. I'm calling 7-6. It would not surprise me. I won't ask you to call who wins it, mind. Good. That really could be a Good. coin toss. Four minutes, enough time for three very quick frames. If it's time for two frames, we could be looking at a six red shootout. If it finishes level after 40 minutes, each player will get oh. a go at six reds. And whoever clears them the quickest will win the match. Oh, those reds are good as well. Greg goes in off. Place the cue ball and pop the one next to the eight ball first. These reds look there, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And they kind of connect nice because you can kind of play, you know, the one in the, the one centre pocket to come down for the bottom of the table. Oh, John's very careless not to play those two reds together at the top. He must have a plan for it. He wanted to play the one he's just played and then the next one at the top and he's land he, land he landed on an awkward angle. It's a massive frame for John as well because he's breaking in the next one with a chance to win the match if he can get over the line in frame 11. He's, he's made these hard work. The shot clock will do that to you. Yeah, I tell you what, if he may elect to play bottom left here now. Play the one in the centre and then come bottom left. The red at the top of the table to get onto the eight ball well, is quite good, but the getting yeah. on the red is actually now the problem shot. Well, the one he's left at the top of the table was third, and he he, he, he didn't quite get the pattern right because of the cue ball. So he's had to come this way now and basically get as cute on it as you can, but without snookering yourself behind the yellow. Played that really well. He played, he did play very well. Brilliant shot at the key stage in the match. Nice little flick. And John Rowe will go on the hill.
with two minutes to play. Big frame to win for the ringer. It's a tough one for Greg Batten to take. He didn't do anything wrong. Kicked in off the break and invariably gets punished at this stage in the match. And he may not touch the table again. This is where that frustration can come in as a player because Greg will feel that he's absolutely been in this match all the way through. And then at the very end, is he about to have his opportunity almost taken away from him? That's how he'll feel right now. I think both players will be ruining their chances somewhat. Um, It'll be a tough one to lose this, I think. Yeah, I think, I think both have got a, a, a case. Um, for feeling like they could have won or should have won. Took a little bit off that break, I think, John. He's made a ball. Oh, that cue ball's come out horrible. Well, I, I would say he's, I would say that John Rose won this match. Yeah. It's over. He's just got to play really, really messy here. Make this horrible. Chew some clock. 1.45 left on the clock. Greg's, Greg's done. Unless he can well, he's find some Gareth Potts style speed around well, the table. Well, the thing is, though, they're not laid out like Gareth Potts is <laughs> to speed either. You know what I mean? It's kind of, he's a red stuck here to the yellow. Um, John's probably going to pot the first ball anyway. John can eat 15 seconds up here. He's already used his extension. If he can't pot one, he'll give Greg about a minute to try and clear them. He should be able to take this red off the table. I'm just going to take the yellow. And again, just makes it nasty. And John Rowe is almost there. Kind of feel a bit disappointed we didn't get to see how a deciding frame. It, 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 it sort of felt like it warranted a decider, really. Yeah, I don't disagree. I'm sure John Rowe does. No, I'm, I'm sure John's disagreeing, though. Great effort from Craig Patton if that had gone in. Been one of the shots they talked about, I'm sure, on day one. But John can just wind this one down. He is very, very almost there. <laughs> he looks like he's had to work a bit hard in this match, and he has. Well, to say he's about to win, he look, it looks like he's, it looks like he's fed up rotten, doesn't it? <laughs> uh. Great too, Greg Patton. He's still making, well, trying to make something happen. But John Rowe can now see this one out. It's all over. John Rowe is going to take his place against Shane Thompson in our group final for a spot in the quarterfinals. Great matchup between two really, really good players. It's John Rowe who gets the run in the end. The final five minutes absolutely key. And the ringer gets over the line. A big performance from John Rowe.